वेलकम टू द कोर्स बिजनेस एनालिटिक्स एंड डेटा माइनिंग मॉडलिंग यूजिंग आर पार्ट टू सो इन दिस पर्कल लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अवर डिस्कशन ऑन क्लस्टर एनालिसिस सो लेट्स स्टार्ट सो क्लस्टर एनालिसिस इज इज यूज फॉर अनसुपरवाइज लर्निंग टास्क ऑफ क्लस्टरिंग सो एज वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इन प्रीवियस कोर्स that uh, in supervised learning method we typically have two types of task one is prediction the other one is classification in this particular course uh, we are we have already discussed association rules and the, this is the second technique uh, that we have started our discussion on is cluster analysis so clustering and association rule mining are the two unsupervised learning task so uh, this particular technique uh, this particular method cluster analysis is used for unsupervised learning task of clustering so uh, used to form groups or clusters of similar records based on measurements taken on several variables for these records so uh, the uh, data for uh, this particular method uh, or technique is the uh, tabular format of data that we typically use for most of the data mining techniques and uh, the variables are going to be on the column sides and the uh, observations uh, would be on the row side and uh, the measurements on these variables are going to be used to find similarity among observations and then the based on that similarity we will try and create groups or clusters of those observations so the uh, whole idea of uh, cluster analysis is to identify and form these clusters based on some similarity you know the similarity can be uh, you know uh, computed uh, using the uh, different uh, uh, you know uh, variable measurements so as you can see in the next point so the main idea behind cluster analysis is to characterize the clusters in ways that would be useful for generating insights so why we want to create these cluster or groups uh, because we are interested in uh, some uh, specific characteristics of those groups or clusters and these characteristics can throw some insight some light for further research so cluster analysis in a sense uh, as we have talked about in previous course as well that uh, typically uh, unsupervised learning methods uh, unsupervised learning techniques they are used for the exploratory research so first Uh, you know uh, research uh, you know very first research studies on a new in a new field are uh, typically use uh, you know these techniques unsupervised learning techniques and once some idea about uh, that particular new field or domain is established it is only then supervised learning techniques uh, you know become useful so main idea is when we are learning about when uh, we are venturing into a new field and we are, are trying to learn something about uh, you know different concepts theories models variables uh, that are involved uh, you know these unsupervised learning techniques provide us the tool uh, to go ahead so one of them could be uh, characterization of different things finding out natural hierarchies uh, you know uh, you know among different things that are there in that field uh, so cluster analysis is uh, one way to characterize uh, you know the to form these groups uh, or clusters all uh, natural hierarchies and characterize them so uh, using different variables using information uh, that is there uh, contained in those variables we can always uh, find similarities and dissimilarities and form clusters and this can later on be used to characterize uh, the same clusters application of cluster analysis is in many domains so uh, you know uh, so if we look at just the uh, management area then customer segmentation you know uh, market structure analysis uh, balanced portfolios industry analysis so all these are some of the examples where cluster analysis is uh, has been used and is uh, you know remains very popular uh, for example industry analysis so how do you uh, you know club or you know a uh, form you know uh, you know uh, forms in or unorganized sectors and club them and uh, find clusters uh, find similar firms working on similar kind of products process or similar kind of 
a, a, you know, uh, practices that they might have and some sort of uh, variables to be used and create clusters and to identify uh, firms in different groups, different segregated groups. So, for that the cluster analysis can be really useful. So, industry analysis can be really uh, you know a cluster analysis can be useful in industry analysis. For example, performance uh, you know so uh, whether the firms uh, which firms are highly performing, which firms are uh, you know, uh, not not uh, not doing so well, and what and depending on the different variables that that could be used, we can create those clusters: high performing, uh, you know, uh, firms, uh, you know, average firms, and then uh, poorly performing firms. So all that kind of uh, industry analysis can also be done. Balanced portfolio. So as uh, we all know that. Uh, 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 we try to create balanced portfolios to uh, mainly uh, you know cover the risk. So, we would like to spread the risk among uh, uh, various portfolio items that we uh, you know invest in. So, uh, how do we uh, do that? So, cluster analysis can really be useful to identify high risk uh, you know uh, high risk items, low risk item and average risk items and then uh, balanced out uh, the investment portfolio uh, in a sense. So, cluster analysis can be can be useful there as well. Market structure analysis. So, uh, there are so many products uh, that are available that are being marketed and sold uh, in different industry uh, sectors. So, how do we uh, identify similar products or you know if there are any dissimilarity between some products and services. So, that kind of grouping or clustering can also be done using cluster analysis. Similarly, customer segmentation based on some demographic information or personal characteristics of those customers, you know we can apply cluster analysis and find out the similarity and dissimilarity and then create segments and then uh, develop our marketing and promotional strategies differently for each of those segments, right. So, uh, these kind of uh, you know applications uh, cluster analysis has been these kind of areas are there where cluster analysis has been applied very successfully. So, uh, these are some of the examples in, in the <laughs> management or business domain. However, cluster uh, analysis remains popular in other science and engineering disciplines. So, uh, during uh, the our discussion on uh, cluster analysis, we will uh, you know we will have this uh, we will discuss this example as well breakfast cereals examples. So, uh, we have a number of uh, you know cereals in this particular data set and uh, information on you know different uh, nutritional ingredients and uh, other things for example, price and weight and other things that is available in this particular data set and uh, we would be using this data set to find out uh, different clusters or group among these serials. So, as you can see here records uh, to be clustered are serials and the clustering would be based on 8 measurements on each serial. So, we have data on uh, 8 uh, variables uh, for these serials. So, let us look at this data set because we would be referring to this particular example in our discussion of cluster analysis. So, let us go back to our studio and uh, let us have a look of uh, this particular data set. So, let us load this library, library x plus x. So, this would allow us to use functions uh, which uh, can be used to import excel data. So, you can see the file that we are going to uh, import here is the uh, breakfast serials dot xlsx. So, let us run this code. So, you would see this file is right here. Let us import it. You can see in the environment section here 35 observations of 17 variables right now. So, we will be getting rid of getting rid of uh, some of these variables as we will see. Uh, so, uh, total uh, 35 serials uh, data on 35 serials we have and uh, uh, let us uh, remove the redundant columns here and uh, let us uh, take a new copy of this data set. Let us look at the structure. So, now, now we can see the kind of uh, you know kind of measurements that we have taken on these serials. So, you can see 35 observations, 17 variables. So, first one is the brand name, the second one is the product name, then we have weight of uh, those uh, offerings, uh, those uh, market offerings products and then we have uh, price of uh, those packages and then the energy 
uh, and the in the units are also mentioned as you can see energy protein uh, content carbohydrate content uh, the total sugar that is there <laughs> dietary fiber fat uh, saturated fatty acid uh, mono uh, mono unsaturated fatty acid poly unsaturated fatty acids so different uh, natural and other ingredients and other information about these cereals is available cholesterol sodium content iron content and then we also have the customer ratings how customers have rated uh, uh, these cereals so uh, all this information is available with us so we would be using uh, uh, this particular data set uh, in our discussion of cluster analysis let's look at the first six observation of this particular data set So let us scroll for first few columns. So as we discussed brand name then product name then weight. So uh, then weight and pricing. So here it is important to note uh, notice uh, here that uh, the weights for these uh, you know these cereals are different and uh, therefore it, you know other variables for example price and other ingredients energy you know other information like energy uh, and other ingredients uh, protein carbohydrate they would also be you know they would not be in the in the same kind of a scale so uh, because the weights for the, the these packages are different so we need to uh, do certain computation certain transformation for these variables so we would like to change the scale of these variables so as you can see here in uh, this particular line of code uh, what i have done i have tried to uh, bring all these value to the same skills. So now uh, you can see here 1000 is being used. So all these uh, price and other uh, information, energy, protein, carbohydrate, etc. Now they would be for uh, 1000 gram of uh, that particular cereal. So let us run this code and change the scale. Now uh, after this uh, we would be getting rid, getting rid of uh, two columns first one is about the brand name and the another one is about the weight because now weight is already incorporated and the scales have been changed so we will just uh, use the remaining variables uh, for further uh, uh, analysis now let's look at the first six observations again now you would see a uh, first column is now product name then we have price now you can see the price values have changed so they, these values have been appropriately adjusted or computed uh, for you know uh, 1000 grams of uh, these cereals and you would see energy values and protein values all these values have been appropriately changed now uh, we have the information uh, using same scale so this is the uh, data set that we have and this data set is, is uh, something that we are going to refer to uh, during our discussion on cluster analysis. Now uh, let us uh, come to uh, types of uh, clustering algorithms. Uh, so there are two uh, general types of clustering algorithms. So first one is called hierarchical methods. The second one is called non-hierarchical methods. So as I talked about uh, uh, that uh, cluster analysis can also be used to understand the natural hierarchy you know uh, you know among uh, different things uh, that we are that we could be studying so uh, hierarchical methods are typically used for that and then we have non hierarchical methods so let's uh, discuss these methods uh, these types of methods one by one so as i said hierarchical methods are useful when we are looking for clusters with natural hierarchy so a number of clusters are determined from data Right, because natural hierarchy we typically expect it to be in a certain form so uh, the number of uh, clusters uh, have to follow that uh, you know that hierarchy so uh, typically useful so this particular these particular methods are useful when we are looking for this kind of natural hierarchy and number of clusters so that we are interested in they can always be determined from data so within hierarchical methods so we have two types uh, first one is called agglomerative methods the second one is called divisive methods so what is the difference between <laughs> uh, these two methods so let us see so in agglomerative methods we start with n clusters and sequentially merge similar clusters until a single cluster is reached so uh, th that is why the name comes agglomerative so we are creating a aggregation so we start with n clusters and we identified we ident uh, try to identify similar clusters and keep merging them until 
uh, VDs to or one particular cluster. So, this is the typical process that is adopted in agglomerative methods. If we have to talk about the divisive methods, so it is just the opposite of uh, the agglomerative methods. So, here we start with one cluster which includes all the observations and then we divide it uh, into a number of clusters depending on the similarity or dissimilarity. So, it is just the opposite process. So, uh, typically agglomerative methods are more popular. So, in this particular uh, you know uh, 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 discussion in our discussion of cluster analysis, we would be using agglomerative uh, methods. So, let us move to next category of cluster analysis that is uh, non hierarchical methods. So, in this case uh, number of clusters are typically pre specified. So, we typically have you know we have you know ha have idea about due to our domain knowledge and other things. Uh, that uh, these, these would be the number of expected clusters and those clusters are typically uh, pre-specified. So, <laughs> this particular technique uh, is generally less computationally uh, intensive and uh, preferred with large very large data sets. Uh, so, uh, typically uh, one of the technique that is quite popular is k-means clustering. So, uh, popularity is also because of the uh, uh, lower uh, labor of uh, lower uh, level of uh, computational intensity. So, in this uh, uh, particular technique k means clustering observations are assigned to one of the pre specified number of clusters. So, you can see the task is much uh, you know uh, simply uh, simpler in this case. So, we have the number of pre specified number of clusters and uh, the observations are assigned to one of them depending on the uh, similarity or dissimilarity. So, uh, let us look at uh, let us go back to our studio and go through our, uh, you know one more exercise to understand uh, a bit more about uh, cluster analysis. So, let us uh, consider two variables uh, in our database of uh, breakfast cereals. So, these two variables are customer rating and price. So, we will consider these two variables and try to uh, you know create a scatter plot uh, using these two variables and understand about the groups or clusters that can be visually seen there. So, let us look at the uh, range of these variables. So, customer rating. So, you can see here it seems that customer rating uh, you know is it is between you know lower range is 1.9 then 4.9. So, it seems that uh, 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 you know rating options were 1 to 5 and uh, then we have the price. Let us look at the range. So, it is from 180 to 2853 this value. So, this is the range. Now, these values have been used in this plot function to specify the limit. So, that uh, we are able to use the most of the uh, graphic space that is available with us. So, let us plot this. You can see uh, x axis uh, you know ra rating is uh, go going to be plotted on x axis and price is going to be plotted on y axis. So, let us uh, run this code. So, you can see a plot has been generated. So, if we zoom into this plot and uh, so here if we look at uh, this particular plot we can identify certain groups of uh, you know observations. For example, here these three observations right. So, uh, for example, these three observations these uh, we can uh, uh, use here. So, these three observations seem to be in one group. Then if we look at here so these observations these this group of observations seems to be forming one cluster here. And uh, then we have uh, this group of observation they again seem to be forming one cluster here. And again uh, the, these three points they again can be uh, can be thought of as forming a one particular clusters. Uh, this one seems to be outlier you know the distant point from all of these clusters. So, uh, typically we can see four clusters here. So, let us uh, switch out. So, uh, now all these points uh, because all these uh, breakfast cereals uh, they have uh, they have uh, you know product uh, information we have. So, that text can also be added on to this plot. So, let us run this code text function and you would see all the product names you see here all the product name let us zoom in. You can see against all these uh, you know breakfast cereals we also have attached the 
name of that products. So, in this uh, fashion uh, we would be able to see the name of the cereals and get an idea about which products are being uh, grouped uh, with uh, what other products. So, if we look at the process that we have done manually here, uh, we try to identify, uh, we, try, we try to identify few groups from this database. So, in a way uh, in using this uh, we uh, you know unknowingly we used this two dimensional distance here. When we try to identify these groups uh, one group one, group two, you know cluster three, group three uh, and four. So, in a way uh, using these two uh, you know x axis and y axis using these two axes, uh, we tried to uh, you know use the two dimensional distance uh, based on these two uh, based on these two variables. So, in a way the clusters that we create they incorporate the uh, you know uh, similarity dissimilarity using the distance uh, matrix right. So, that brings us to our uh, discussion uh, back on uh, certain important points about cluster analysis. So, as you can see here uh, the last point in this slide cluster analysis can be thought of as a formal algorithm that uses uh, distances between observations as dissimilarity measure to form clusters right. So, in the, the process that we did using the scatter plot uh, uh, you know in inherently we use the distances. So, the cluster analysis as such can be thought of a formal way of doing it where the distances between observation are being used as dissimilarity. So, higher the distance uh, more the uh, dissimilarity right. So, that those distances between observation can be used uh, as a dissimilarity measure and the clusters or groups can be identified. Now, uh, if distances are to be used then we need to uh, see that there are two types of distances that we will have to compute here. So, one would be distance between two observations and the second one would be distance between two clusters right. So, uh, once uh, you know we to identify clusters we need to compute the distances between observations then we would be able to identify the clusters or groups. And once that is done uh, you know for any new observation that we want to uh, you know assign to a particular clusters uh, we need to know the distance between clusters you know for that you know that point you know uh, and its distance from different clusters and all that. Uh, so, these uh, two types of distances that we can uh, see foresee that have to be computed. Now, uh, here as I talked about that uh, distance matrix are uh, being used as dissimilarity measures. So, uh, there are some common properties uh, that are required uh, for a metric to be defined as distance matrix. So, these properties have to be followed. So, here some notation has been mentioned which is to be used along in the in the discussion of cluster analysis and uh, uh, particularly the discussion of distance matrix. So, we are here assuming this observation i x i 1 x i 2 up to x i p. So, these are the coordinates for this particular observation where p is the number of variables to be measured. So, we have uh, measurements on p variables and those uh, p measurements are uh, creating a coordinate for us for observation i. Similarly, for observation j we have x j 1 x j 2 up to x j p. So, these are the coordinates that we have for this observation. Now, uh, the distance d i j the distance between observation i and j. Uh, so, d i j is the uh, uh, you know notation that we are using for uh, that distance. Now, what are these uh, common properties that we talked about? So, uh, these are uh, the four property that has to be satisfied for a particular matrix to be uh, considered as a distance matrix. So, first thing is non-negative. So, distance has to be a, a non-negative value. So, it would be either 0 or greater than 0 it has to be non-negative. Then self proximity a distance uh, between uh, distance uh, you know uh, of a particular observation uh, from itself has to be 0 right. So, d i i the distance of the observation from itself has to be 0. So, that self proximity rule has to be satisfied for any distance metric formula. Symmetry, so distance between two observations i and j has to be same as the distance between uh, observation j and i. 
So, so uh, that symmetry has to be satisfied satisfied by the uh, any distance uh, matrix formula. Triangle inequality. So, distance uh, between any two points that is i and j should be less than or equal to uh, the summation of distance between two points i and k and k and j. So, this triangle inequality is also to be satisfied uh, is also to be satisfied for a distance for a matrix to be treated as uh, in a, uh, a, an appropriate distance matrix. Some of the uh, popular matrix uh, are Euclidean distance, correlation based similarity, statistical distance, Manhattan distance uh, and the maximum coordinate distance. So, all these uh, matrix that we just named here, they are typically for numerical data. So, these matrix can be used to compute uh, the distances between two observations for numerical data. Similarly, for categorical data also there are few matrix that we would be covering in coming lectures. So, let us move forward. So, Euclidean distance is the uh, uh, is the uh, first matrix that we are going to discuss uh, region being uh, the uh, it is the most popular uh, distance matrix. The formula for Euclidean distance we are already familiar with. So, uh, you can see here in the slide D i j distance between observation i and j can be defined uh, using Euclidean distance formula as, uh, as, as seen here. Uh, square uh, you know root of x i 1 minus x j 1 square plus uh, x i 2 minus x j 2 uh, square plus up to x i p minus x j p square. So, this is the value uh, as per the Euclidean formula. So, for any uh, two points for example, the observation 35 observation that we had the in the breakfast serial data set. So, for uh, between any two observation first and second observation we had the values uh, for all the variables. So, that can be used to compute the distance between those observations. If you look at this formula, this formula is highly influenced by the scale of variables. So, if the values, the actual values of these x i 1 and x j 1, you know for any particular, you know for any particular variable, if uh, you know uh, the values are on the higher side, then that particular variable might dominate the uh, distance value. So, uh, this formula is a scale dependent. So, uh, variables with large scale will have a, a greater influence in computing distance values. So, uh, how do we overcome this problem? So, the solution is to normalize or standardize uh, continuous variables to bring them to uh, same scale. So, how this is done? Let us go back uh, to our studio and uh, through an exercise we will do this. So, uh, two variables uh, that we have considered uh, till now is customer rating and price in our data set of uh, breakfast cereals. So, what we will do is we will uh, do a small normalization exercise using these variables. So, as you can see uh, some code is written here. So, uh, we are calling this data dot frame function which is, uh, which is going to create uh, <laughs> this a new data frame uh, consisting of uh, these columns. So, first column is product. Uh, so, uh, nothing you know the, pre the previous data frame that we have already created df. So, we are passing on the product name of uh, you know uh, from that data frame to this column. Then the rating we are passing on the customer rating to this column. Then we have price then we are the, we are passing on to, to the next column of price. Then we have a norm, norm rating which is the normalized rating. So, we would be doing normalization of rating and the uh, normalized price, norm price, so we would be doing the normalization of price. So, the function that is uh, uh, being used here uh, for this normalization process is scale. So, you can see a scale function, more details on x scale function you can always uh, find from the help section or you can all, all, always refer back to the video lectures of uh, previous course. So, uh, first argument is uh, the variable itself uh, df uh, dollar customer rating. Uh, then we are uh, center and a scale. So, this is nothing but when we say center is true and a scale is true. So, we are essentially going to compute z scores. So, typically when we talk about normalization typically we, are, we do uh, what we do is standardization which is nothing but computation of z scores. So, we so what we do within this is that <laughs> we subtract values, we subtract mean from the values and then divide by standard deviation. 
So, the same process is going to be done using this particular formula. So, rating and price. So, both so we are considering rating here is also to be a numerical data, right. So, uh, the rating of those serials we are assuming that it has been quantified and numerically represented. Uh, so, uh, these uh, these variables, so using this formula, these uh, variables are to be normalized. So, let us run this code. Let us just call and uh, we will see that the uh, first uh, column is product, then we have rating and price. So, these are actual value and then we have norm rating and uh, later on uh, norm price. So, you can see the values have changed. Uh, so, uh, these values have been standardized now. Uh, so, uh, now these values now because of the uh, scale that we have. Uh, these values can now be used. Uh, so, no particular variable will be able to influence the distance computation uh, since the standardized values would be in the same scale. So, uh, to look more about uh, the difference between the actual scale and standardized scale, uh, some code has been written which is uh, doing uh, nothing special, but uh, we are just computing the mean values. Uh, for the you know uh, you know actual variables and then the mean values for the normalized variables and then the standard deviation for the actual variables and also same for the uh, you know normalized variables so let's run this code and you can see here uh, rating the average rating was 3.8 and the uh, price average price was uh, 772 if we look at the normalized rating so you can see uh, both have uh, come down to the same scales, right? The, these values are almost close to zero. So, in the normalized scale, the values for both the variables are almost close to zero. So, both have been brought down to the same scale, uh, similar kind of values. But if we look at the actual value, values, rating is about uh, four, and the price is about seven. You know, is about eight hundred. So, there was huge difference. So, price would have uh, dominated the uh, distance uh, values, right? But now, using the normalized scales, uh, it won't happen. Similarly, standard deviation has also, you know, changed. You can see standard deviation is much lower for rating and much higher for price. And now, if we look at the normalized scale, so it has come down to the same value, right? So uh, you can see uh, using uh, this kind of normalization and standardization, we can get rid of this scale, de uh, you know, dependence problem of Euclidean distance matrix. Okay, so uh, till now, uh, so what we have done, we ha uh, computed the uh, normalized value for those two variables, and we could see how the uh, we can get rid of uh, the scale dependence of Euclidean uh, distance matrix. So we'll stop at this point, and we'll continue our discussion on cluster analysis in the next lecture. Thank you.